Welcome to worship at Orchard Lake Community Church Presbyterian. It is nice to see your faces on this beautiful Sunday morning. I do have a few announcements. The first is that the mission team will be sharing a video after uh, the benediction and the postlude, and we will explain why after worship, but this is a five minute moment for worship video uh, for the congregation made by Andy and Carrie Robertson. Um, and so we will share that concluding the service. If you would like to remain for that, you are welcome to do so. Tonight, there is a prayer time. The sanctuary will be open from 7 to 9 for prayer if you would like to come to the sanctuary at any time during those two hours. There are fireworks on June 26th. Uh, join the church in the parking lot at, for the Orchard Lake Country Club fireworks. It sounds like a really wonderful uh, time for families, and please know that um, there will be a food truck with games and activities for children. Please bring your own lawn chairs and mosquito repellent. Uh, those are very uh, much in need. So uh, that will begin, um, I believe, at 8.30. Uh, festivities begin at 6.30, but the fireworks are at 8.30. And also please note that there will be an additional worship service beginning June 27th at 8.30 a.m. Again, bring your own chair for outdoor worship beginning June 27th. And then we are seeking nominations. The Permanent Nominating Committee is seeking nominations from the congregation uh, for people to serve in all areas of ordained officer leadership. And with that, again, welcome to worship and glad that you are with us this day.
If you are able, I invite you to stand and join me for our call to worship. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard of Aaron. It is like the dew of Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion. Come, let us all worship and kneel together before our maker. Praise be to God. Praise be to God our maker.
be seated. Friends, in faith and humility, let us come before God and confess who we are as God's people. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have called us to be a new community in Christ, and yet we remain divided. Forgive us our fear, anxiety, prejudice, and misunderstandings. Strengthen our common bonds and deepen our resolve to promote the unity of your church. In Jesus' name, amen. People of God, all of us together have received God's mercy in Christ. In Christ, we are forgiven, redeemed, and made to be a community united in faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. Can I have the kids come up, please? I see some out in the Lakeview area. Fantastic. Got the Lewis contingent here. And the Cher family, come on over. All right, good morning, good to see you. You're looking great. Have a seat, come join us, fantastic. So happy to see all of you. So I have a question. And it's summertime, and a lot of people are going on vacation, so I have to know, who here likes, raise your hand, who here likes to walk on the beach and collect seashells? I do, I do, I do. Anyone else? Yes. Okay, it's unanimous. Fantastic. So you know what I brought with me this morning? I brought some seashells. Let me show you. Got one of these. Cool, huh? You like it? A starfish? You like it? Uh, I think so. One of these. Feel that kind of bumpy. Yeah, it's an awesome. I think so too. Lucas says it's awesome. All right, and I have some other ones too. You want to pass that down if you want? I'll pass that one down. These are the really cool ones. And I want to make sure you see this one broken one while I'm here, too. Take note of that. It's important. So I like to go walking on the beach and gathering seashells with my daughter, my daughter, Julia. And when we go walking, I only pick up the shells that are really, really pretty. I don't ever bother to pick up a broken shell. Not Julia. You know what Julia does? Julia picks up all kinds of shells. She picks up the really pretty ones like you might expect, but she also picks up the broken ones as well. And I said, Julia, why are you picking up broken shells? And she says, Mom, even the broken shells are really, really pretty. Even though it's broken, it might still have a pretty color. Even though it's broken, part of it still might have a nice shape or it's still a pretty sand dollar even though it's broken. I'm wondering, now what do you think? Here's my question for you. If Jesus were walking along the beach picking up shells, do you think he would pick up just the pretty ones or do you think he would pick up the broken ones too? What do you think? Just the pretty ones, anyone else? Anyone else? We know what, I was thinking about that, and I'm sure Jesus really would like the pretty ones because they are pretty, but you know what? I'll bet you, I'll bet you that Jesus would probably pick up broken ones too. And not only does Jesus just pick up pretty people and pretty shells, but you know what? He picks up broken people as well. He picks up people who are not perfect, and he still loves people who are not perfect. In the Bible, it tells stories about how Jesus would heal a blind man or heal a man who had sores all over his body or help a crippled man walk because that is what Jesus does because Jesus loves the people who are broken and Jesus loves people who are not perfect. And you know the best part of it is? Jesus still uses them to do great 
things and to accomplish goals and to be of love and service to others, even the most broken and imperfect people, Jesus still uses them. Can you pray with me? Oh, loving God, we thank you this morning for this church. We thank you for the opportunity to be here, to worship you, and to learn more about you, and to love you, and to praise your name. Thank you for picking us up, for picking all people up, and using us in different ways to love other people. Amen. Thank you, Martha. Our scripture reading comes to us from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. Listen for God's word to us this morning. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. For those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again so that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue confess and praise God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. This is the word of the Lord. that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we pray for your mercy and your love to be with us in this moment of reflection. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How does one in the name of Christ welcome another who is different? Paul writes that whether you prefer to eat only vegetables or abstain, or maybe you believe in eating more than vegetables, whatever your convictions, however you partake, you are all, says Paul, servants of God, and God has welcomed you and your expressions of faith. It is God, says Paul, who will judge. Holding tightly to an expression of our faith in God or our response to the gospel, as opposed to another expression or response, feels, well, more like division and not like unity in Christ. Whether one is considered weak or strong, says Paul, all stand before the judgment of God. To be self-centered or self-righteous, we might say, is to place our convictions in the center instead of God in the center. To place God in the center, this means to me to hold lightly, to accept and bring into communion with whatever is weak or strong or in or out or up or down as part of the larger story that God writes in the hearts of the faithful. As Martha said, none of us is perfect or perfectly pretty. We are those broken seashells. We are all in this together. And none of us is God, for it is God's reconciliation in Christ that is central to what unifies us. As I was reading Paul's words, I was imagining this allegory of the cookie which helps me to consider how we live our views and maybe our expansive views within the kingdom of God. So imagine with me, if you will, this beautiful, yummy, chocolate, chunky, melty cookie that everyone loves. It is warm from the oven and it fills the home with that beautiful smell. It is carefully placed on a plate for you. It is lovingly and widely shared, and all who eat enjoy the flavors and that home-baked touch. It reminds everyone of home and being welcomed. Now, somehow along the way in this recipe, walnuts found their way in, and nobody minded because they kind of took a back seat to the chocolate, and then oats somehow blended well, but nobody minded. The recipe was shared and consumed, and each year people remembered the cookie at special events, and they shared it, and they gave it away, and it was good. And then came along someone into this community who brought a lemon square with sprinkled coconut. Oh my, it was delicious and refreshing even, but it was not welcome because there were some who said the chocolate walnut oatmeal cookie was the standard, and that was the reason everyone gathered, to eat and enjoy and share that particular cookie. No one, they said, should be eating the lemon square coconut cookie. It was just too different. They didn't understand why it was necessary to introduce the lemon version. It just didn't belong. Well, one day, a lover of lemon wondered, is the table too small for two types of cookies? Well, I have friends who love to eat no-bakes. No-bakes and raisin and snickerdoodles. Well, how would they feel? So this lover of lemon proposed to the lover of chocolate cookies that there was room for more than one kind and said, let's have a cookie party. What if we offered multiple ones? But the cookie was pushed aside. She even showed them that some of those who liked the chocolate also liked the lemon. And at other times she noticed new people who weren't involved in any way with cookies began to show up to the table with vegetables, fresh from the garden. It wasn't that they didn't like chocolate, they just didn't have a taste for sugar, so they brought their vegetables. 
Now, this analogy can be used to explore how we in the church circles that we belong in or teams welcome new ideas or even people. How do we understand the work of God in our lives and in the lives of those who are exploring their faith in light of traditions and practices and daily meal settings? Does the church have and create space to explore possibilities? And do, the, do those who might long for the former recipe give space for that? Now, Paul was writing and working within a context where Christians were converting or being brought into the fold from various cultures, pagan cultures, Jewish cultures, Greek cultures, other walks of life in Rome. Some who came to the table earlier were setting the norm for behavior and life, but while doing so, he was advising this church not to hold too tightly to those norms, lest they cause disruption and upset the unity of what God was doing with them all, all together. It was more important to Paul that unity under Christ's rule be preserved than to argue or split over table rules and what a Christian should eat or drink, or more deeply, how a Christian should practice and interpret Christ's salvation in their daily living. As we look at this analogy of the cookie, other questions come to mind. Is there work in our community or faith or theology or daily living? Is there room in our life even for more than one type of cookie? And who holds the recipe for what is normative and acceptable? Who gets to decide what ingredients are compatible? And is this the end goal, compatibility? Or can we honor difference in the fold and say we love Jesus Christ? That's what brings us together. Who decides that we even need to be at a table? What about being outside? Is the table or outside too small for others? Showing up to the table with a new kind of cookie may bring all kinds of feelings, unease and fear, but it may also bring excitement and joy that something and someone has given a new taste of what can be. Unity can be had in this work of God. Indeed, it is had in the work of God. Being a part of the wide communion of saints means sometimes spaces will overlap with quite a diverse group of views, and it means learning to respect and have admiration for the work of people with whom we disagree. God is so very good and generous and calls us to appreciate that Christ's redemption and salvation is a gift. It is not earned. It's really not even to be fought over or fought for because it's been done. This great and loving mercy of God, the redemption in Jesus Christ, is why we are here. Because God has already given freely of God's very self in the love of Christ for each and every one of us. And then the invitation is to be there together as ourselves. The church is big enough to address social ills while at the same time caring for its members who may not wish to engage in that dialogue. And Paul says, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. I pray if we have a table, or if we are outside, that it expands and welcomes all. I pray leaders continue to share and discern and respect the gospel in all its manifestations and expressions and joys and questions, including doubts. I pray that whatever gets stuck within us gets unstuck so that people can be themselves and bring their gifts in service and praise. In reading this text a few times, I finally noticed that Paul doesn't choose sides in this text. He makes sure to honor those who are on these other sides. Those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, and those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord. There is room in this theology for both, and all are in the Christian church. Unity doesn't mean we won't disagree. We will disagree. But unity makes room for that 
making sure what we do is in praise and thanksgiving for all that God has done for us. And placing God's center is central to our faith. And when we give thanks to God for the gifts of friendship and mission and purpose and care and compassion, those gifts and thanksgivings can be shared and attended to. Nurture, as Paul does, a table that welcomes different recipes. For our lives are indeed living works of Christ. And for that, we can all give thanks. Amen. Let us consider our offertory reflection as we give thanks for all that we have given God this week of our time, our talents, and our treasures. So today is Graduation Sunday Recognition. Do we have any graduates in our midst? We have seven people graduating. Let me see. Okay, this could be a really quick moment here at church then. All right. I think we're going to go into a band of this activity. All right, that sounds like a deal. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, wherever our graduates are, we give you thanks for how they have survived through this pandemic and perhaps taken hybrid courses or online courses. And we give you thanks that they have made it to this wonderful goal in their lives. We pray for their futures and their new learning opportunities and if they're seeking work, we pray for their summer to be well. We also, holy God, pray for those who need a break, who are tired and weary, perhaps from teaching all those courses, or for the frontline workers, 
for those who are seeking respite, for travel, to take a breath, to be renewed. Lord, for those who are traveling the road of chemotherapy or other places for rehab, Lord, we pray that your mercy would be with those who are frightened about their futures because they are in a health crisis. We give you thanks for the work of those who are caregivers, for spouses, for siblings, for those who reach out with a hand to listen and affirm for those who have the compassion to say, God loves you and I am here with you through this, and you too are a beloved child of God. We pray for those who are struggling in their faith, for those who want a place that feeds them, and Lord, help us to be the people that we know you want us to be. Help us to be discerning and compassionate. Help us to lead with integrity and love. We pray for the Orchard Lake Church, for all that they are facing, for continued grief and loss, for the changes happening. God, we pray for your Holy, Holy Spirit to enliven and direct. for the world that continues to fight and wage war, for those who struggle because of racism, for those who feel excluded, we pray, God, for your church to be a welcome haven. Jesus, we love, reached out to those on the margins and walked with those who were weary and fed those who were hungry and calls us to do the same. And Lord, as we consider those who are on the prayer list this week in our daily prayers, help us to be mindful of reaching out to those who are homebound, of those who may need a loving call. And we pray this in the name of your Son who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you are able, I invite you to stand and sing with us hymn number 456, I Come With Joy.
be seated. May the God who makes everything holy and whole make you holy and whole. Put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If Christ said it, Christ will do it. Friends, let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you. 